Okay, so this is our lecture on Express and a couple of other things uh, that we're going to take a look at. So um, we're going to be using ex uh, Express to create a simple web application um, where we're going to be displaying uh, tweets uh, as well as information about users, and you can drill down to see the tweets of a particular user. And we're going to explore some other technologies there as well. Um, but before we get into that, let's actually look at this slide, which looks like a lot of alphabet soup. Um, but these are actually all protocols. And they're protocols that deal with computing uh, over the internet. Um, and we're going to be focusing on HTTP, and in particular, how Express ends up wrapping around uh, HTTP, um, or what I should say is how Express wraps around an implementation of HTTP, uh, or more particularly, a node implementation of HTTP. So that's where we're going to end up going, but just to sort of see how some of these things are related to each other. Um, before we end up, before we can end up uh, communicating between HTTP, we have to make sure that uh, computers can find each other, that when you make a request, it can end up finding the server. Uh, we also have to make sure that the information that comes over the server comes over completely because it's, um, uh, you know, you're, you're not, you won't end up, you might not get all the messages in one shot. You might get them, you're going to end up getting them in, a, in the form of, of packets. And there's got to be a way to determine when the message is complete. So all these things revolve around protocols. And if we look at this uh, stack, and in particular, these three layers here, the IP layer would be a protocol of how uh, computers communicate with each other or find each other over the internet. The TCP layer is responsible for uh, basically making sure that messages um, are complete, dealing with how packets end up getting uh, sent over the wire. And the HTTP layer is a protocol that deals with how messages should be structured. Uh, in particular, these are going to be um, text messages and, you know, how the text messages are structured in terms of what resource you're accessing, uh, what status the response is, what the payload is that's going over the wire, what headers are being requested, and what uh, headers are being received. So we're going to end up looking at, uh, we're going to end up looking at all these things. But again, just realize that, you know, this is a protocol that is very important to us because it's the protocol of the web. It's the protocol of browsers. So as opposed to some other of these protocols might be protocols for mail programs or, or that sort of thing. So um, we're going to be focusing on HTTP. This is the layer. This is the protocol that we're going to look at. Um, when we end up thinking about making a request over the internet uh, through HTTP or even HTTPS, uh, the client ends up making a request, goes up to the server, and we get a response back. The key takeaway here is that every request ends up getting one response. I mean, you could look at a web page and see that there's multiple things happening, and you could look at the network request, and you could see a lot of requests, but each of those is one request. So there'll be one get request to a web page, that web page will come back, and there might be resources that end up, um, there might be, in, um, uh, link tags or for style sheets or script tags for JavaScript um, and those and then those requests are going to get made and even when you know when we look when we start thinking about single page applications um, we end up making Ajax requests that go up to the uh, server and end up getting responses so this is something that we'll we'll uh, end up taking a look at when we think about a protocol they're rules right it's a specification it's not an implementation and often protocols are used for communication. Um, and Node's HTTP library is an implementation of that HTTP protocol. So again, the protocol specifies the rules, and Node has implemented those rules with the HTTP library. This is a library that you don't have to do NPM install um, because that library is available um, to you right out of the box, the same way that the FS library is. And, uh, any number of other libraries that we'll end up using. So let's start out with a request, because again, all these things are based on requests and responses. 
when we start with a request, the request is just a message. Like I mentioned, it's, it's text, really. And if we sort of break down the pieces here, we've got a route, we've got a verb, we've even got the version of HTTP, we've got various headers that go across, and in this case, we've got a payload that's going across. Um, and traditionally, you'll end up using a post. Uh, I shouldn't say traditionally, I should say conventionally. You'll end up using a post because you're going to be uh, inserting something on the server. We'll, we'll talk about the idea of having resources on the server, and posts are conventionally used when you are creating a new resource. So in this case, probably we would end up having a book title here and maybe some other information on the book. And, and if we were really inserting, we might not have a book ID because the book ID would be something that would probably be auto-generated. But again, neither here nor there. The main thing is that we have the ability to make a request and with a post, uh, send a body to the server. Um, when we think about these common verbs, one of them being posts, um, and again, this is based by convention. A get re with a get request, uh, you're reading data from the server. Or you're getting a resource or maybe a list of resources. When we say resources, you know, maybe we are in the widget business or in the book business or in the whatever business. Think about whatever entity uh, you're talking about or in the article business. And you might make a get request to see a list of articles. You might make a get request to see one article. You might make a get, get request to see the articles by a particular user. And uh, the uh, route that you end up um, requesting, which is going to be over here, so the route that you request is going to be uh, determined by what the resource is that you're looking for. Um, so. Uh, and again, conventionally, we, we spoke about this, uh, I mentioned this uh, a couple of minutes ago, posts are used to create data, puts are used to uh, update data, and deletes are used to delete data. Now, again, you could set up your uh, website any way you want to set it up, but this is conventionally what people do, and it's a good idea to do it. So when we look at a response, we're going to end up getting a status code. We have to know, you know, was that... Does the server, what does the cons server consider that response to be? And again, this is arbitrary. The, um, again, there, there are um, uh, conventions which you should follow, but it's up to whoever is writing the code to end up sending back the correct re response code. And there's a lot of different codes. Uh, we're going to look at some you know, general codes, but sometimes if <clears throat> there's some kind of error that's on the server. There might be one type of people might, you know, even decide, well, <clears throat> that's really a, should really be a four or something or other, or that should really be, a, again, I don't want to throw the numbers out there, but you can actually look, if you look at a list of status codes, you'll see that there's, there's quite a few of them. Um, and we're, we're going to look at the, the main ones that we'll be using, and these are the ones that you're going to end up implementing in these, uh, in these workshops. So we also can get <clears throat> uh, headers back in a response. And uh, more than likely, although not all the time, uh, we're going to end up getting a payload, which will actually give us uh, some text, which we could end up displaying to the user. So common statuses, we might uh, get a, a 200. That's the most common one. 201, where something is created. 304, when you request a resource and nothing's changed since the last time you requested it. 400, when you have a bad request. 401, when you're not authorized to see a resource. 404, when it can't be found. And 500, when there's some, five, uh, when there's some uh, server error. So Express is a node library for request handling, but Express is sitting on top of this um, HTTP module, which again is the one that's uh, implementing the HTTP protocol, plus it's using, you know, other modules uh, as well, some that are built in and, you know, some that are, um, uh, that are open source. So for instance, we'll see that, you know, if we ended up, when we end up setting up a, a static route with Express, Express is probably using the FS um, module to read files and to uh, serve those files back. But 
in the end, the Express, again, is a library for request handling. And whenever we think about requests, we should also think about responses. Um, so uh, Express ends up treating requests as objects. Um, and I, we should also say response as objects as well. When you end up creating Express routes, it, they're going to match on the verb and the route. Um, and you have the ability to chain uh, handlers together. When you end up thinking about Express, I think the term that should pop into your mind is really two things that I think you ought to think about. Um, one of them is pipeline. Uh, because uh, if you end up making a request, it can end up matching different, what we're going to call different pieces of middleware. And when we say different pieces of middleware, again, it's much more apparent with, with an example. But when we say different pieces of middleware, what we're talking about are callback functions. And you could end up hitting multiple callback functions based upon what your route is. Um, there can be uh, pieces of the express pipeline that you hit no matter what your request is. There can be a uh, piece of the pipeline that you hit if there's a get request that goes to a certain route or maybe a get request to any route. You have total control over how this stuff ends up getting configuring, uh, getting configured. But the, the key is, is that order is important. And it's similar to when we ended up creating the, the, the pipeline with the node shell, where you, know, you end up going through the pipeline in order. Uh, well, when a request comes in, it's going to go through the pipeline in order. And once it ends up getting returned, it ends up getting returned. So, you know, when we, when we do end up creating these routes, it's going impor to be important that we don't put a general route that matches everything all the way on the top. Because if everything's handled by some general route, if there was some specific route that we wanted to hit, we would never end up hitting it. So when we think about Express, we should think middleware, pipeline, again, the, the, um, uh, the uh, allowing, uh, it allows us to chain all these different handlers. And when we're talking about handlers, these handlers are individual pieces of middleware. But in the end, we say middleware, it's sort of a fancy term. These are just callback functions when you match a particular route. Um, we also have the ability to enable uh, modular layering with routing so that when we do create our routes, we don't have uh, this tremendous file with all our routes. We can sort of separate our routes out and end up testing our routes separately. So the a couple of gotchas to be aware of uh, with Express, uh, the difference between app.get and app.use. App.get, we're saying a re request is going to come into a route and um, it's going to be a get request, where as opposed to app.use, app.use is going to uh, end up getting uh, used. You can spend, it, it can be almost like a global uh, route handler or a global piece of middleware that's in the pipeline. We would end up, we're going to end up using app.use when we want to add a piece of middleware that's going to end up parsing a form and creating an object from that form. And when we start looking at making AJAX requests, it's going to do something similar. But instead of parsing a form, it's going to end up taking the uh, payload that comes over, and it's going to uh, do a JSON parse on it to end up giving us an object. Uh, it's also important that the routes are not file paths. I mean, they could look like file paths, but um, and you could end up returning a file from them, but they're not file paths. And you know, you have the ability to create whatever route names that you want. Uh, as I mentioned before, the order is critical. Um, you're going to want to make sure that, you know, you have more specific routes uh, on the top and more general routes on the bottom. Um, the other thing is that when you end up sending data to the server, there's a couple of different ways that you could get it. If you have a post request uh, and you're using some sort of um, middleware to handle processing that post request, you'll have a request body. You could also have name params in routes, in which case you'd use request params. And you could also have a, um, uh, a regular uh, URL encoded query string where you could get values from the request.query. There's also a difference between app.use and app.all. With app.all, you could set a route where uh, a route could be hit for either a get, a post, a put, a delete, uh, any verb, as opposed to app.use, which is uh, uh, more general uh, in the sense that you could end up creating your uh, a static piece of middleware to basic to say, hey, uh, if you end up making a request, I could find that 
file that you're requesting in some directory, I'm just going to end up serving that file. And, and that's something that you have to do when you're dealing with either JavaScript or CSS that you're going to be returning uh, from the server. So that does it for this. So let me just save this up.